All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning if you are on Pacific time and happy dinner time if you are joining us from Europe. We are so excited to be here with you today for our second installment for the Women at Work series. We are really talking to you about how you can establish yourself with corporate success. If you joined us two weeks ago, um, we definitely talked about how you can take charge of your career. That video is available on YouTube if you did not get a chance to see it. And Elizabeth delivered such amazing nuggets of information on how to be the person in charge of your career. So if you didn't catch that one, please do. Either way, we're so happy you're here with us today. We have a formula that is definitely going to get you promoted. So if you're sitting around asking yourself, how do I get promoted? How are people getting promoted before me? How am I gonna be the person that they look towards to say, she's the one, that is our lady. And Elizabeth is coming at you today with some knockout punches. So <laughs> get your pens and papers ready if you love to take you know, notes on your iPhone, open up that notes app, but do not let anything else disturb you because we are coming fast and furious with the exact detail you need, the algorithm that will get you promoted. So joining me live today, I'm Shannon Gregg. I am coming at you from shannongregg.com and Elizabeth Rodriguez Dennehy is joining us to give you this formula that is going to knock your socks off. So lady, I'm going to let you introduce yourself because I know that they can't wait to hear what you have to say. Well, well, Shannon, what an introduction. So, so here, here's what happened. We met um, months ago now, and we sat down just for those who are joining us today for the first time to try to figure out what will be the most valuable uh, effort, the most valuable information we could send your way, particularly to the young professionals. Because we feel that the young professionals, sorry, I got some air in my throat. Uh, young professionals really have been sort of left in a vacuum. And this is what's fascinating. Last week, I'm subscribed to Harvard Business Review. And last week, Harvard published an article that says, Six ways to take control of your career development if your company doesn't care about it. So this is an issue that we know you're going through. Therefore, we are putting together for you very simple steps, formulas that allow you to get and acquire control over your career today is promotion. And we're going to get um, a very, um, help you develop a very simple, very powerful structure for you to get to where you want to go. Number one, pencil and pen. And now here's what we're going to do. Shannon and I, I'm going to present the idea and Shannon always comes up with phenomenal examples and how is it that she has been able to get promoted at gotten where she wants to go by using some of the steps that we're suggesting. For her and for me, it's been more on intuition. I'm too old. For me to even know all this, I just, back in my times, we were trial and error. Shannon is in a generation in which she started to get information. She's very well read. She is into getting involved in networks. So it, it, it informed her early on in her professional career. That said, we want you to have it easier, a pathway. So number one, for you to get promoted, the most important thing you need to really start to understand is, what is it and who is it that's in your network? Who are the people that know you by first and last name? Who are the people who know how good you are? Who are the people that will talk about you, about your work, character, attitude, demeanor? For us to be promotable, one of the things that we need to be really clear about is that we need to have people who will speak up about us, express who we are with the gusto that they perceive from us, right? And so the network that you have is your first step to understand what is it what is in that list that I need? And who are the people missing? 
And so since we already went through the experience of sort of setting our goals in our first uh, uh, module today, knowing pretty much what we want next, who are the people we need? Now, let me turn it over to Shannon because she's a master networker. Shannon, how is it that this has helped you? Such a good question. So having a network means that you have a, a group of people who are willing to say, I am going to help you with this piece that you need. So when you've got a network of people who are able to fill in the spots that you don't have, and if you imagine your career like a puzzle, and the top corner piece might be understanding finance, and the bottom corner piece might be understanding project management, and you're sitting in the middle, you're in sales or you're in customer service, those people who are in those other corners will help you to fill in the picture that you need if you can just ask them for help. So you have to constantly be developing your network and looking to say, what skill do I not have that I can network into so that when I'm faced with that giant project or deliverable or request where I can prove myself, I can get the advice of somebody who's already been there and done that. And you know, it's funny that you and I are able to be here today simply through the power of networking. <laughs> <laughs> True, true. That's exactly how it happened. Uh, Shannon heard of me. We reached out uh, to each other and it, it's been a, a delightful experience personally and it's been a phenomenal experience professionally and it's just the beginning. So more to come, right? So networking is very powerful and what Shannon is talking about is getting um, organizationally savvy. So what she's saying to us is, which is very true, it's very important, is Networking serves many purposes, to get information, to get people to know you, to understand the power structuring the organization. And if you're not network, none of those things are part of your life. Um, and it's essential because I have to tell you one thing, and Shannon mentioned this also in our previous module. You will not get promoted just by doing great work. That is not happening. You get promoted, and this is something I tell all the people, all the women I've trained all throughout all these years, more than 10. You get promoted because you're really good and the right people know you. And today we're helping you figure it out. Number one, that network. Number two, your brand. So the brand is about your personal brand. What is the tagline associated with your name? You know, in the world that we live in, one of the things I do is let's use association. So I said, so how do you, or what do you associate Volvo with? And I've used that question everywhere I go. Brazil, Prague, everywhere I go. And the same answer surfaces, safety. What is the tagline associated with your name? Reliability likability, high degree of competence. If you are not taking care of your brand, then how is it that people can really express what you bring to the organization? What are the perspective? What is the impression people have of you? Is it congruent to what you think you bring? Vis-a-vis -vis what they know. Shannon, how is it that branding for you has been such an important step? Yes, I think branding is ultimately important. And uh, I think what's underneath that is self-awareness. So being able to say, I know what my brand is, is the most critical piece of branding. So if you're not sure what it is that you stand for, ask your friends, ask your network. You know, what are the three adjectives you think of when you think of me? And, and I now am fully aware of the things that I'm really good at and I try to exploit those and the things I am not at all good at and I try to use my network to fill that in. So I'm never afraid of somebody doing something better than me. I want somebody to challenge me on the pieces I'm not good at. So when you're looking for your tagline, and Elizabeth, that's the best way to put it. Yeah, it's your when tagline. When they say, you know, oh, Shannon, she's so blank. What goes into that blank and how can you affect that? And if you're not sure, ask your friends and figure it out because the only way you can work on how people think about you is to understand what they think about you. And here's the reason. This is not about just will people like me. 
This is about the perception people have of the competencies you bring so they can connect you or align you to the right position for you. If there is a vacuum, how can they go about talking about the benefits of having you in a team um, when they're not sure? How do they position you in the shortlist if they don't have a very clear idea and a, here's what's important, consistent impression that you are, and then that's a tagline. You know, in my world, people say the word they use with my work is inspirational. Um, and that I help reframe very quickly behavior. That's the constant thing that comes up. So, so that's the thing that I know I bring in and that's my, so what, the tagline, right? And what does that represent? So brand, your brand statement is very important. There is a lot of details that go into developing your brand. Uh, Shannon mentioned a couple. We do that work and we'll be happy to support you if you need to get into branding in detail. So branding, very important. Now, the number three is what is it, and it's, it's a sequel or, or it's, a, it's a result of your brand. What is it that you're uh, unique uh, uh, about? What are the things that are unique to you? And Shannon already mentioned, I'm very good at and I'm not very good at. The reason for it is that that which is your, your golden nugget is your place of strength and your core. I'm very good with people. And there's a world that has to do with being very good with people. How is it that for you, Shannon, thinking about your unique attributes have helped you be so successful? Well, I think, I think I've been able to identify my tagline and then say, where does that best fit? So people know that I'm assertive and being assertive wouldn't necessarily sit very well in a finance organization, for example. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, finance is about rules and I don't do very well at following those. <laughs> so um, I've been able to take my tagline and say, okay, while I'd be capable of working in these particular fields, not all of them line up with what I'm really good at. And I think that's something that's important to understand is are the things that you're really good at lining up with the career that you've chosen? And if not, try to find some realignment on either side. You know, it's like, it's like a weight, it's that Libra scale. So you can say, where do they come in balance? So that the things I'm really good at equal up with the industry or field that I'm in. So she's summarizing, and here's where I think you're getting the drift. Promotability, to get promoted requires work, thoughtfulness, strategy. And, and that there is the, the steps that we're sharing with you need to happen. Otherwise, you're not going to get to your end game. You're going to get somewhere. But like I've always say, unless you choose, you get exactly that, what they choose for you. So the number one is, do I know the right people and do people know me well? Two, do people really, really get my brand? And if my brand is not clear, it's not impactful, it's, it's not apparent to people, there's what I have to go to work. Number three, what are those unique attributes that I have? Why? Because that's how you describe your work with people. I love finance. I, I really enjoy working with numbers, seeing how numbers impact the organization. And as you express that, people get a very clear, unequivocal impression of what are the things they can do on your behalf. And again, it's also aligned with what do you want. So that's why we started with that first module, helping you understand what is it that you want so you can express that. And I always use the word gusto because it's a phenomenal word, with passion, right? Now, number one, is my network, number two, my brand, number three, what is, what is unique about me, and number four. And this is the part that uh, Shannon is, is, is phenomenal. She is masterful. It's asking. 
And, and the asking is to be alert to ask. And let me give you an example. Uh, there are scenarios in which you can be in a meeting and you hear about an, a situation. And by the way, all of this is building up to the one most important thing. And that is how is it that through all this process that we are uh, expressing to you, we get ourselves to be involved in a stretch assignment. So the steps we're giving you are leading to pushing you to ask for a stretch assignment. So today, when you think of promotability equals to stretch assignment, and what are the steps I need to take for me to get into a stretch assignment? My network, my brand, my uniqueness, now it's my asking. And asking is to be alert to the opportunity. In a meeting, someone can mention a really interesting project. In the hallway, you can hear about it and say, oh, that sounds really interesting to me. Or you can be asked to get involved in a stretch assignment. Stretch assignments are the core, are the tool that push your visibility. All these things we've been talking to you about come together in execution, which is the last step. And we'll talk a little bit more shortly. That moment in which we put ourselves together because we know the people, they know me, they know my brand, they know my unique talents. And now I'm going to show you. The show you is a stretch assignment. And what we find there's a direct link between stretch assignments and promotability. Okay, so Shannon, um, maybe a couple of examples of how is it that asking for a stretch assignment has worked for you? Such a good question. <laughs> so, you know, I think, I think what you're saying is totally right. You have to set the fear aside and, and be able to ask and I've said this so many times, people who are on this that know me, and you know this already, but if you don't ask, you're already at no. So if you don't say, hey boss, um, I'm really interested in this project, can you put me on it? And they say no, that's fine, because you weren't on it if you didn't ask anyway. So the risk is minimal, <laughs> the failure rate is low. So just gather up your courage and say, I heard that they're working on a new ERP system in the finance department. And even though I'm over here in project management, it really matters to me to understand how what we're doing interacts with that technology. I'd love to be on the committee for implementation. And that sort of thing will open you up to new experiences, new departments, new people for your network. <laughs> and it really will expand your brand and expose more people to it. That's exactly how it works. So the reason for the stretch assignment to be the, the, the key to open the door is because it's the safest, most impactful, most constructive, most productive scenario. You can leverage to get visibility, people to know how good you are, to find out for yourself whether you really like something a department or a task or a particular field. And for the company to start to cave and develop a strategy on, on where is it that they want to take you. So the fifth and most important is the execution, right? How is it that I'm going to take on this stretch assignment and make sure I'm going to execute with a high degree of commitment and a high degree of passion, make sure that I do this piece of work with as, as is the same, you know, care and commitment as your dot, you know, day to day work. The stretch assignments typically are added on work. Either, you know, you ask for more. I did it all the time. Back when I was a lawyer, I kept asking for more cases. And people would look at me, are you crazy? And I said, well, the only way for me to learn how to be a good trial attorney is to be in court. And the only way for me to be always in court is to have more cases. And so I did it intuitively, but that's how it works. Now, as you look at the, the organization and you observe people who you think are successful, I'm going to tell you something 
and uh, it's a bit of a challenge. Go and ask them, how many stretch assignments have they been involved with? And you're going to get a smile right back at you, and you're going to get this, this same answer we're offering to you. It's one of the most, most critical, and for many, a tipping point. Um, so definitely, you have to be aware that for you to be involved in, in an environment of promotability, right, for you to be involved in that, in that short list, for your name to be there, there's work to be done very strategic work. There's one thing we're seeking, a stretch assignment, and there are path, it's a path to go to and get them. Um, so Shannon, as you think about execution and, and the, the, the capacity to execute with thoroughness, do you have any example of something you've done that can be of help to our audience? Uh, I think, I think in terms of execution, when you're asking for that stretch assignment and you're saying, Hey, I'm, I'm volunteering as tribute, right? <laughs> let me, let me in on this. Um, get over the fear of not executing correctly. And so, um, I'll give an example of a time that we were, we were launching a new, a totally new department called sales operations. And I was working as a proposal manager and I'd only been with the company for about a half dozen months and uh -huh. the job posting went out and it said, come manage this brand new sales operations team. And so I raised my hand and I said, Hey, I know I just started here. I know that, you know, I haven't even proved myself in my role, but do you think I could help you develop this team? You know, I'm, I'm asking if I can stretch myself in that way. And um, by raising my hand, I actually got thrown into the pool of candidates. So I think in that instance, the stretch assignment developed into something totally unexpected for me. But being unconcerned with execution because, hey, I'm going to try it. I've never done it before. Um, so I, I'm not going to look at it and say, if I can't do it perfectly, I'm not going to do it at all because that would have stopped me from even raising my hand to say, throw my name into the ring and let's see what happens. And so execution is critical and important. And if you start to feel that your execution is not meeting your goals, go back to your network and say, help me out here, friends. I, I really need some assistance so that I can execute this in the way that I can best. That's absolutely uh, an important piece. And Again, that's why we're doing this together, because we bring to you all the possible angles of this conversation. So when I say execute with consistency, Shannon is reminding us to say, but without fear. Right? Execute fearlessly. That doesn't mean you're not going to be thorough. That means that, it, like she's saying, if I have a doubt, I'll ask. And, and see, that's the point. You're stretching. When you don't know it, that's a stretch. And that's what you're proving to the organization. I can take something new and I can learn. I'm going to share very quickly a scenario of a client call, who called me yesterday. She just got a promotion. She's going to be now reporting to the CEO of the company. This is a woman that has been in my life for more than eight years. And when I met her, she was a manager of six people in, in a department, very important company here in town. Um, but it was a small group. And one of the things that she's done throughout her career is, and as a consequence in part with the work we've done together, is that she has this beautiful spirit and attitude about being fearless. And so the stretch assignment scenario for her became second nature. And in seven years, she's gone from a managerial role to an executive role reporting to the CEO. In my book, that's exceptional. And, and here's what's happened. She's done it feeling and knowing that she can do it authentically. Her spirit, her personality, the way she carries herself has been part of this formula. So one of the things we continue to remind yourselves, I want you to remind yourself is the following. All this advice we give you has to be grounded in your spirit of, of self in knowing that what's important is that the brand that I bring to the world, the uniqueness that I represent to the world resonates with who you are. That's your point of power. 
It never fails. It gives great results. And again, just to let you know the last part of her um, promotion, it was done in a room with the five executives toying out different names. And then one person said, what about, I'm going to use the word name Jane. And the, she came up because she has such an incredible brand in the organization. Everybody knows her and knows what she's good at, that it became sort of like, oh, that's it. And decision was made. So it, the moment when she expressed all this to me, it, it sort of condensed what we're talking to you about. This works if you take the process seriously. And Shannon has done this work beautifully, consistently. Shannon, one of the things that impressed me of you was the fact that you told me you pretty much were sort of asked to join one of your clients uh, lately. You did not seek them. They found you because of your brand and your reputation. How was that? Well, you know, what's interesting is I never set out to be in the field that I'm in. <laughs> um, <laughs> But um, really what I started to do was find other people on LinkedIn who were in the same industry as me. Oh, there you go. And so I started connecting to them and saying, what do you know? How have you learned the things that you know? What networking groups do you belong to? Who are your mentors? What are you reading? What are you watching? Just that sort of natural curiosity. One, help them understand I had an affinity. And two, help them to understand that when they heard something that sounded like me, they would send it my way. And so um, just developing those relationships by, by opening the doors and saying, hey universe, here's what I'm looking for. And I think this, this will apply to any industry with anybody who says, I'm going to be fearless and I'm just going to tell you, here's what it is I'm looking for. Can I help you with anything? And in turn, will you help me with this sort of thing? Exactly. And just putting yourself out like that is, is, is scary. It's fearful, but people love to help. Other people love to help you. So once you ask, it sounds corny, but you shall receive. <laughs> I tell you, when I moved to Pittsburgh, nobody knew me. I moved to a town in which I, I back then we had yellow pages and yours truly picked up the yellow pages from her kitchen and she cold called. And here's what I found early on, which has been pretty much, and it was a great thing because imagine if I had been turned down, but um, people said yes. People said yes to someone they had never met before. who just told them I'm new in town. This is my background. I'd like to have a cup of coffee with you. Now we have technology available. And so these networks are so much easier to come by, but Sharon and I are telling you fearless because at the same time, if you think about it, fear is just an emotion that, that sort of paralyzes so many great things about possibilities. It's hard, but it's not impossible and you can develop that muscle. Now, one of the things we want to do and, um, remind you is you can send us emails. You can ask us follow-up questions as we conclude today and we're going to have our last session a couple of weeks just to make sure that you are, you know, clear about some of the ideas we've mentioned. And at the same time, you can get to feel or get more information about what are the other things that you can start to tap into that allow you to take control of your career. Today, this topic is fundamentally critical. Stretch assignments are the way to promotability. There are five steps, your network, your brand, your uniqueness, the, the execution, the asking and execution, um, understanding that you're gonna give 100% and knowing that's going to be according to what Shannon said, which is absolutely true, fearless. So I think with that, I'm done. Shannon, yours. <laughs> and we'll take it from here. That was, it was a good wrap up. And I hope everybody wrote it down. If not, like I said, we'll be sharing the recording. Um, it will stay yeah. on Facebook Live. And we also have this one and the previous two, actually. We had an intro. Yeah. And then how do I take charge of my career 
are on YouTube. You can find those. And again, like you said, email us if you want the links or have some follow-up questions. We have what I think is the most exciting of this small series in, in two weeks, which is how do I maintain authenticity? Yeah. So that will be exactly two weeks from now. It will be on a Wednesday, same time, same channel. But this one is so important to me. And I think you and I had this conversation over tea and I probably needed a stronger tea when we were having this conversation, <laughs> which is, you know, how do I do this as a woman in sales while maintaining what is uniquely me and not trying to play someone else's yeah. game? Yes. And I think that authenticity piece is really the cornerstone to controlling your career and getting promoted. And I, for one, cannot wait to jump on this same call in two weeks so that everybody can hear the things that you have to say about it, because it definitely opened up my mind a lot. Well, I, I, again, you, we never operate from uh, a, a place of doubt, ever. And so the reason why we're doing this is so that you don't have any doubt. So as you think of your career, knowing that your career is not going to be really pretty much protected by corporate America, that's what we are learning and it continues to come our way. We are here to fill that vacuum. I hope you join us next week, Um, actually two weeks from now. And I hope you have had a chance to really take this on and really digest it. Make, it. make it part of your intellectual DNA. And any questions, any doubts, technology is on your side. Give us a, um, send us an email or send us a comment. Connect with us in LinkedIn and we'll get back at you as soon as we can. All right, with that, I sign off. It was great chatting with you again, Shannon. You too. You too. And thanks to everybody that joined. Please invite two or three of your friends to the next one. As women, we really have to pull each other up and not push each other down. So this authenticity one in two weeks is worth everyone's time. Bring your friends and we'll see you in two weeks. Thanks, Elizabeth. Take care. Bye.